I'm making this video to discuss the different filter options that are available for the Alfa Romeo Giulia. And this would really apply to both the Giulia and the Stelvio. These happen to be the 2.0 liter um, versions of them, the gasoline 280 horsepower model. However, they're the same as the 200 horsepower, the overseas diesel engines. And really, it also applies to the quadrifolios of the Stelvio and Giulia as well, because we're talking about the same construction. And importantly, we're talking about the same filter media that would be used in each across all platforms. So the first one we're talking about is the OEM. This is, uh, some of them are made by Hengst. Uh, it's the OEM filter made out of paper with a foam surround constructions, kind of feels like a squishy foam. And then uh, they either have metal, metal or plastic um, stabilizer kind of brackets right here. And this, this one, um, I'm not sure which brand that one is. I'd have to look again, but um, a popular OEM brand is the Hengst uh, filter, and it's the 1450L. And then the second one is the BMC air filter. And this is a multi-layer cotton gauze style filter. Um, anybody who's familiar with the um, k &N style filters. This is the same type of media that's used. Um, this one has a very rigid, stiff um, rubber surround. And then it's going to have a screen type material that holds in the cotton gauze media itself. And it connects to the frame through rubber. And this one's pretty stiff. You can tell actually if I put my finger in between the two and lift it up like this. It holds it up pretty well. And then finally we have the Sprint, the Sprint filter. And this one has a soft rubber surround, kind of feels like, um, like scuba goggles. And the same screen that holds in their single layer of synthetic material. And this one is a, like I said, it's just a, it's a softer material, so you can see, you can see there, which is fine, you know. Uh, um, but uh, a diff different style and construction techniques with these three. And again, when we talk about flow with these three different types of filters, you know, we want to talk about flow and we want to talk about filtering capability. Those are the two most important characteristics of these filters. Now, when it comes to flow, there's already been numerous, numerous studies done with, with uh, excellent laboratory, you know, um, quality equipment. And they basically, the results uh, almost universally in multiple different applications show that the OEM style paper media is as adequate but it's going to be the most restrictive and then your K&N uh, style this is BMC multi-layer um, multi-layer gauze cotton gauze is going to flow um, a little bit more and then finally your single layer um, synthetic material sprints are going to flow then even more now um, you know what is the difference going to translate to in real life performance you know when we're talking about either horsepower ultimately what we're talking about is acceleration um, probably extremely minimal you're talking about probably one or two horsepower um, not even measurable with a dynamometer or, you know, a performance accelerometer. So, um, again, with the OEM being adequate for flow, and yes, these might flow a little bit more, but you can even take the filter off of a car, and um, generally um, you're, you're probably not going to gain enough um, on a dyno um, to even be able to measure it reliably time and time again. So... The purpose of this video then is we're going to focus a little bit on is filterability. And this is important for us if we're going to be, this is a daily driving car, it's important because there are silicates, there is uh, iron dust, uh, there are, you know, contaminants that are in our environment that can make it way, uh, make their way through different filters that we have in our vehicles and can cause significant damage over the long term. This will depend, of course, on the areas in which we drive. It will also depend a little bit on the engine construction. So the cylinder walls in our cars um, are not all made out of the same material. Um, some of them um, are a little bit more um, prone to damage than others and cylinder scoring. Um, so the common contaminants that are in our environment are sand, which we know as silicates, 
and iron dust. Um, the OEM filter is generally been uh, known to filter the best. K&N style generally known with BMC stating they filter down to about seven microns. Um, and then Sprint um, in some of their media that I was reading claiming that they, um, that they filter down to 7D microns. Sand, iron dust can be down in the 10 micron range all the way up to probably 50 microns. This stuff looks um, pretty coarse actually, so it's probably 50 or 100 micron-ish. And this sand um, I would say is, looks to be about the same, I'd say somewhere in the um, 30 to 50 micron range, and so we'll see what can pass through. Um, first, I just wanted to talk about flow, though, real, real quick. Um, you can actually see uh, flow and filtering ability when we hold these filters up to the lights a little bit. This just gives a quick little demonstration. Here, we can't see any light. I've got my fingers behind it. You can't see my fingers, and you can't see the light that's behind it. We're going to compare that now to the BMC. You can see the light. And I'll put my fingers back there. You can see kind of a fuzzy contour of my fingers there. Okay. And now let's go to the sprint. This one looks kind of like a screen door. Um, you can see straight through it. You can see perfect contouring. Um, you can see the objects that are behind it um, very well. And so this is um, probably, we can make assumptions here of how they might filter, but let's take a look and actually see. Now, I looked at different ways in which we could run this test and what my best um, option was that I considered is to just go ahead and pour light amounts over each side of the, uh, pour light amounts of the contaminant over each side and give it about five taps and see what gets through. Now, the reason I've done this um, to try and, you know, simulate, you know, how well the capability is, is because, if anything, that really gives these filters the benefit of the doubt, okay? So what I mean is that in real life, you say, well, that, that doesn't really mimic real life as much. Well, that's true. But in real life, what you're going to have is very diffuse amounts of sand or iron, you know, within our air. It's going to be pushing through the filter at 20, 40, 70, 80 miles an hour as fast as you're going, and it's going to shoot right through and so if we made a test that mimicked that here, you know, we could try and rig up, you know, uh, airflow and, and um, that's going to be difficult to measure the amounts that are actually getting through if we do that. So if anything, what, what this study is going to do is, is really um, uh, give the benefit of doubt to these filters. Um, so what I mean by that is that if this sand can get through by just simply pouring it on it and going like that, then we know that it would absolutely be able to get through if it was in diffuse amounts in our air being pushed through it at 70 miles an hour. So we may get some false negatives with this type of a, a simple study, so to speak. We may get some false negatives, meaning that these filters may be shown by what we're doing um, to filter perhaps a little bit better than they actually do um, because of, you know, our, our media, our contaminants not getting through. Um, so there may be a false negative there, but there's not going to be a false positive, meaning just by taking these contaminants and pouring them over the filter and shaking it a couple of times, um, we're not going to run the risk of, of inaccurately showing that the filter could have performed better in real life than what we just did. So that's, that's not likely to happen. If anything, these filters would perform worse in real life than compared to what, uh, what we're doing as far as, as far as filtering ability. So let's do that with each of these. Let's just start off um, with the OEM filter and we'll start off on each side and we'll see what we get. Okay, starting off with the OEM, we're gonna start off with sand. We've got a black background here so we can see it better. And these, this is probably the coarsest, so we're just, uh, so we're going to start out with this, the, probably the coarsest contaminant, and really the most damaging and most common that you'll find. So I'm just pouring it across here. And then we're going to one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And we're going to move it to the side. And the only sand that we really got was spewed off from the side of the filter. So none went through the filter. Okay. Next, we're gonna take a look at the other side and we're gonna do the iron dust. Just gonna 
take a little bit here. Get a good amount, good healthy amount here. Just keep pouring it on. All right. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And actually, that did a pretty good job. Yep. That did a pretty good job of filtering it, too. Um, I really I don't see any. So, okay. OEM filter did well. Let's move on down the line to the BM. Okay, bring the BMC over. We cleaned up our area and made it nice and clean. And we're going to do the sand here. Same way, we're just going to pour a little bit. Okay. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, nice job here, too. There are little bits of sand, little bits, and that's in the path, and there's some, you know, on the side. That's clearly, that spilled over the side, um, but in the actual area, that small area where we definitely know the filter was, there are small bits of sand, but in general, pretty well. Did pretty good there. Okay. And now we're going to go to the other side. We'll do the iron dust. Okay, do the same. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And again, not too bad. Small amount of iron dust got through. Okay, we're going to keep that study there, that shot there. Run my finger through it, just to give you a better idea. Okay, we cleaned up the work area, and now we'll look at the sprint. And so we're going to start off actually with the sand, so let me grab our black mat. Okay, and here's our black mat, and we're going to just pour some sand. Okay, and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And a little bit more sand this time, a little bit, but not bad. Not bad. You see the fine, it's almost like it's sifted and it got the fine amounts of sand that went through. Okay. Now we'll bring it out. And now we'll look at the rail dust, and so the iron dust. All right, and we're gonna go. Okay, same thing here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and so definitely, I think we found the the micron kind of level where this is not working at all. So um, got quite a bit that went through there. So I'll just do this again. Yeah, I mean, that's it's a lot. So talking about now um, these three filters, I think we've come to the conclusion of what we did suspect, and which is that the paper filter uh, seems to filter um, very well common contaminants that we'd find in the environment. I'd feel very comfortable running this at any time. Um, the k and style did let um, a little bit of sand and a, shall we say, a moderate amount of iron um, dust through, um, whereas the OEM filter will say in general let none through, so it was excellent performance. So the BMC style or K&N style let uh, a, a small amount of sand and a moderate amount of iron dust through the um, sprint.
filter um, let a, a small amount of sand through as well and we'll say a, a significant or a large amount of iron dust through. Um, so for me, um, I will probably go ahead and continue to use the paper um, filter um, as um, I'm happy with the performance of the vehicle. I don't think, um, you know, I haven't seen any significant performance differences between the filters as far as actually adding significant enough horsepower that it would make any type of difference in acceleration. And there is a clear um, degradation in filtering ability, you know, with these, with these uh, performance filters, with the Sprint, you know, clearly performing the worst.